The, uh... The name's, uh... The entertainment business, the name Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnson probably would not be well known to the general public, but they have to be included probably among of the most important artists of this generation. They went back, worked uh, for Walt Disney in 1934 and 35, became the chief animators of the studio. Some of the films they worked on include Snow White, Cinderella, Pinocchio, Fantasia, Bambi, Peter Pan, and every feature film that came out of that studio. They wrote a, written a book called, they wrote a book? <laughs> <laughs> They've written a book called Disney Animation, The Illusion of Life, and it's a, it's a magnificent book. Would you welcome, please, Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnson. <laughs> Sit down, gentlemen. Yeah. Have I got Frank here or Ollie here? I'm Frank. That's you're Frank and you're Ollie. <laughs> you know, you have entertained all of us for so many years, and yet the general public uh, never gets to see the guys behind the scenes. It's we all... liked it that you way. You liked it that way, really? <laughs> yeah. We get the nervous. Elves and... in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> this is a way to kind of sublimate your own personalities and have it come out in well, the... We go to the theater and, and with an audience, particularly a kid audience, and watch them. You die. You just yeah. die. No, kids are cruel anyway. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> basically true. It must give you a great thrill, though, to realize that you've worked on what I, I guess would be considered almost the official versions of, of fairy tales over the years. They've become that. Uh, yeah, or, I think a lot of people criticize that and say we've changed them around, but uh, I think yeah. they are the official versions. You know, librarians complain a lot about that. <laughs> yeah, you know Walt Disney is such a uh, such a well known name worldwide, and yet you you people who didn't know him, and I, I I did not know him, you hear a lot of conflicting views that he was a cold man, he was hard to work for, uh, all kinds of different things. How, how did you find the man to work for? They're all correct. All, <laughs> yeah. He, you know, he, he was everything you said. Right. I mean, he was a great pleasure to work for. He was very inspiring, but awfully tough. Right. I mean, you'd work your tail off doing something you thought was the greatest thing you'd ever done. Right. And uh, he'd just let it go by and say, now here's what we're going to do. In other words, to him it was just expected. Yeah, that's yeah, uh, what perfection was expected. To, to have excellent work. How many animators did the height of Disney Studios did they have altogether? We had uh, 1,200 working there. At one time, they were not all animators, but right. they were nearly all artists. Yeah, what you call painters and fill-ins and yeah, people who work on... assistants and stylists. And I was going through this book this afternoon. It is absolutely fascinating because those of us who go and watch a cartoon or a full-length feature just kind of take it for granted and don't mm -hmm. see the laborious process of doing figure after figure. How many figures would you say in, in a... Say in a cartoon, if even just, you know, eight or ten minutes, how many separate sketches would you have any idea have to be made to just complete that or move to, to make the movement well you can figure it out there are 24 frames a second right and uh, all you gotta do is multiply the number of drawings against the number of frames and i'm no good at math so it gets into it gets into the hundreds of thousands yes. of yeah, in yeah. a feature picture uh, we probably do a couple of million drawings about a half a million would end up on the screen right and the rest of them you throw away because they aren't good enough that's incredible when you talk about a million drawings um, is this what you wanted to do when you were both uh, started with Disney? You were both illustrators or animators at that time? Did you have to, uh, did you have to audition for Disney? Or oh, what? yes. And we'd known each other at, uh, up at Stanford University in the right. art department there. I thought I was going to be a landscape painter. That was fun. Right. And uh, Ollie was going to... Uh, Magazine illustrator. Yeah, sports heroes and things like that. And uh, we came down here to art school and... Uh, heard that Disney was expanding and they wanted looking for artists. Right. So I went out and took the tryout. Now a tryout, you know what an in-between is? No, you don't know an in-between. No, I don't know. Well, the animator makes... <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Animator. Be patient with me here. <laughs> what's, what's an in-between? The animator makes the key drawings. If an arm's going from here to here to right. here. Now there may be one, two, three drawings in between those two. I there see. may be only, only two in here, depending upon the timing of it. Thing. So there's well, the animator, and the in-between works on... Yeah. The in-between is the bottom of the totem pole. Right. But uh, when you were hired at that time, you had to make your good on production. Right. Now if you're hired, you get, to, oh boy, you get a month to practice and learn lots of things and study, and right. there's so much to learn now. And the style of animation, if you look at the old original uh, Steamboat Willie from Mickey Mouse, for example, uh, the style of animation uh, has changed over the years. Mm -hmm. Was that just kind of... Uh, by uh, trial and error? Uh, Walt wanted to re keep refining it and make it more believable. Right. And, uh, that's why it developed that way. The old ones were really charming, I thought. Right. I don't think they'd hold up for a feature length. Right. 
Now, what do, what do you have here? I don't know exactly what this is. Is this a, a flip card, or were you going to give me an idea of how you, uh, we got a... Uh... Here we were going to, we were going to teach you to draw a Mickey Mouse You're on kidding. these. Yeah. Do we we have a film clip. We, do we want to show this? Can... Would you rather do this or the clip? You have two minutes. Because we're getting tied up on time here. Should we show the clip? Sure. This will really show, I think, what it is all about. Watch the monitor. What is this from now? Is this from a... Uh... Lady and the Tramp. Lady and the Tramp. This was a charming, charming Disney feature. we had more time we're not going to be able to get to this but the book is so fascinating because as i was watching that you have a whole segment on just eye expressions in here and the way you can give the human emotions to animals and even human emotions to objects yes uh is a challenge yeah, you know you i have some drawings here the bottom one showing what you can do with inanimate now this is a it's just a flower sack yeah is it not mm -hmm. and the idea is how do you make a flower sack look sad that's the way you do it it was a happy flower sack. <laughs> a rejected flower sack. It was in love. In the what? Macho flower sack. <laughs> Mousy. Nosy. Nosy flower sack. Eavesdropping. Tickled. And tired. <laughs> those are wonderful expressions you can get from just an uh, inanimate object. Yeah, it'd be fun to animate those someday. Yeah, it's incredible. We'll take a quick break. We're coming right back. That's wonderful. <laughs> Gentlemen, I thank you so much. I wish we had longer to talk because uh, I thank you on behalf of all of us for bringing so much pleasure over the years thank with you. the Disney Studio. The book is uh, is absolutely fascinating. It's just a, a history of uh, animation and the way it comes about and kind of a historical document of our times. And I thank you for being here. It was a very unusual time. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Ollie. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you, Ollie. Tomorrow night, Johnny Mathis will be here, Sandal Bergman, and Dennis Finney. Thank you. Good night. Thank <laughs> you.